and in this video, I want to cover how to make use of the new character component that is now included in setup inside the Ultimate FPS Template plugin. So here I have two different characters that have now been introduced. One is a completely blueprint done character. The other one is using a C++ character as its base class. And ultimately, they are the same. As you can see here, like they are pretty much identical as you can get. So to make use of the character component, as you can see here by both the characters, the only thing you really have to do is make sure you call init. So what you do is you, let me actually create a character from scratch really quick. So I'll do a blueprint class and this can be character or a pawn, doesn't matter. And inside the event graph, we have begin play. What we want to do is add a component, search for FPS and you'll see FPS template character. And I'm going to go ahead and add component to the end of this to make it a little bit cleaner. We drag this out. And all we do is call init. Now, in this case, in a camera component, first person mesh, and a third person mesh. So if we head back over to the ones that already have this set up, we have the camera right here. We have a third person mesh, which is this full body right here, as well as three first person meshes with the main one being the torso right here. So this is the first person mesh. So we just pass these in accordingly. Now, if you want to use a, like a genuine true first person where you have the third person mesh being the exact same as the first person mesh, you can do that very easily as well. So for example, we have first person mesh and third person mesh. If I wanted to do that with where we only use the third person mesh, I'll just delete my FP mesh, drag out another one of the third person mesh and plug that in and you're good to go. So you can pick and choose how you want to have yours set up. So like I said, true first person, just use, just pass in both meshes into both the third and first person, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about anything else. But if you're doing a split and kind of a faked true first person or just like a CSGO style where you just have first person arms, you would do this kind of setup. And once you're done with that, you're good to go. You ultimately don't have to do anything else except for make use of the functions. So here, let's go ahead and I guess take a look at it. So if I place down the component, if I drag out, we can see the list of functions here. So if we go to FPS template, starting from the bottom, we have our procedural tab. Now this is everything related to procedural animation. So we have get is sprinting, whether or not, whoops, didn't mean to do that. We have whether or not we're using firearm collision. We have lean left, lean right. So this is all procedural leaning left and right. We have the ability to set the firearm collision so we can enable or disable the firearm from having collision if we wish to do so. We have our start sprinting and our stop sprinting. So, well, set sprinting, which allows us to start and stop whether or not we are actually sprinting. And this is simply for the sake of procedural animation. So this is not actually handling the sprinting logic. This is strictly for, well, I can just show you. So here I'm not sprinting and here I'm sprinting. And it's just performing the procedural animation, blending in and blending out of it. So that's what it's doing. So again, if you want that actual logic, you just have to handle it. And whenever you start the sprint, just make sure you call set sprinting. We have start and stop aiming. And then we have our, again, our stop lean left and our stop lean right. And that does what they say. So because we use procedural aiming, all we have to do to start aiming is just call start aiming and we'll get at this state. We can stop aiming and we'll be at this state. Lean left, lean right, and however we want to handle that. So moving on up, we have our high and low port. So this is just setting high, low, and stopping the high and low port pose which all those are is this. So here's our high port and here's our low port. So it's just putting the gun up and down. Moving up to the next section, we have our firearm. So this is function related to our firearm. So we have add existing firearm, which if you have a firearm that already exists, you have a pointer to it. You just pass it in right here and it'll go ahead and add it and set it in your hands. The other one is it actually spawns the firearm, which is what I'm using here on begin play. So here I'm calling add firearm and I'm adding my M4. Very simple. 
But back in here, we have get firearm. So this gets the firearm that is currently in our hands. And we have get magnification sensitivity and get magnification sensitivity start value. And I'll explain what those do here in a second. And then we have play camera shake. Now play camera shake, obviously it just performs camera shake on our character. So what are the other two functions? Well, I have an example of them right here in the blueprint character. So this is in relation to magnified optics and your mouse speed. So if I go ahead and add a magnified optic, such as this guy, and I start aiming, here I'm moving my mouse at the same speed. I zoom in, it gets slower. I zoom in again, it gets even slower. So I zoom in and zoom out. As you can see, it changes my mouse speed. So that's all controlled by this function here, get magnification sensitivity. So it takes into account your current magnification of the optic that you are currently looking through, whether or not you are aiming, and basically all you have to do is take that return value and multiply it to your axis value for your uh, looking up and down and your turning like left and right, and it'll take care of it. Now get magnification sensitivity start value. This does the exact same thing. The only difference is, as you can see here, it takes in a start at magnification. So this is where it will start applying the effect of slowing down your mouse. So for example, from if you're at magnifications one through four power, your, your sensitivity is going to be the exact same. But once you go past four power or whatever you set start at magnification two, then your sensitivity will then scale with your magnification. So that's what that is doing behind the scenes for you. So next up, we have our character component. Again, that just contains the init. And inside a character is, for the most part, it's a ton of getters just to help do things like, uh, well, as you can see here, we just have a bunch of helper functions so we can get the in-use in mesh. So in my case, I'm using a first and third person setup so the meshes are different. If I were to call get in-use mesh on myself, it would return my first person mesh. If I called this function on another client, like let's say I'm looking at someone and I call the function on them so I can see what mesh they are using for myself, it would return the third person mesh. So remote clients return the third person mesh. If you're using true first person, it'll return the third person mesh. If you're using a split body setup, then it'll return the first person mesh for yourself. Uh, we have the rest of the stuff here. We can get our movement component directly from our character component find out we're locally controlled. We can apply ragdoll to our character. So this basically applies it to our first and third person meshes like together. And here we have the same thing, but with force. So here we can apply some force, which is what I do for projectiles. So for example, I have this guy placed in here. If I shoot him in the head, as you can see, his head just got knocked back and he's dead ragdolled on the ground. So it applied force to his head and gave him a ragdoll. So head gets thrown back, you know, he falls back. You shoot him from the back of the head, his head's gonna flick forward and he's gonna fall forwards. So that's what those do there. All right, that pretty much covers everything in terms of the component. So the only things you have to do, everything is the exact same as it was before. You just have to call it through the component. So you wanna get access to the firearm to call like the fire functions, for example, well, you just get our component, you call get firearm, and from there you can call whatever you need. You want to start working, you want to like start procedurally aiming and stop procedurally aiming, you just call start aiming and stop aiming. And you pretty much just keep going and going and you can do whatever you want. You want to lean left and right procedurally, just call lean left and, and lean right. And that's really all you have to do. Everything else is taken care of for you behind the scenes and you don't have to really do anything other than call it so you can set it up however you want anyways that is going to be it for this video if you like what you see and you are interested you can find a link to that in the marketplace down in the description below if you like what i'm doing and you want to help support me you can find a link to my patreon in the description as well and if you have any questions on any of this or game development in general feel free to join my discord that's also linked down below and i or some of the other members will help you out so I'll see you in the next video.